What impressed you most about the Warriors during these last four games? Well, I have to agree with you. It was about their offense and the fact that they did it without Kevin Durant. Um, the energy that they played with, the execution, the touches that Steph and Clay, you know, um, it's very difficult to try to keep the ball out of Steph and Clay's hand. And when those guys are getting two, three touches on one possession, um, I, I wouldn't want to defend them. I mean, in the days that I played this game, I've never seen a guy other than maybe a Reggie Miller where you just didn't want him to touch the ball. But Steph has got the defense so extended, 35 feet away from the basket. That's unheard of. <laughs> and how do you defend that? Right. And that's that really what impressed me more is that how he was able to come to the forefront in this series and Kevin Durant not be there, and all the attention went to Steph. It reminds me of where the Warriors were four years ago. Yeah, for sure. Well, Draymond was great all around. I thought Clay's defense on Damian Lillard was brilliant, especially last night when Damian really tried to go to the basket and Clay's length wouldn't let him, right down to the last shot where Clay defended him. But Steph Curry just had four and a half of the most masterful games of his career, and I'm extending it to the second half that he played in Houston mm -hmm. to get them through that series. Um, I know you can make the case that the stakes weren't high enough to say this is the greatest series he's ever had because they were clearly the better team. But I don't know if we've ever seen him play better, to be honest with you. You mentioned earlier he set the record. He set a record for number of threes made in a four-game series. Mm -hmm. I can go down the line all the stats that he did. We are seeing peak Steph Curry. Yeah. And if it lasts into the next round, that could be a short series too. Does it going to last into the next round, though, if KD comes well, back? I mean, let me get my crystal glass out. I mean... This is the Steph Curry who won unanimous MVP. This yeah. is the team that won 73 games. We can debate on and on about whether they're a dynasty, blah, blah, blah. Well, They are playing at this level right now. They would be competitive against any team in history. I mean, I don't think there's any question they're a dynasty. Now, we can debate how they match up two dynasties, your dynasty, Scotty, the Celtics dynasty. They are headed to their fifth consecutive finals, which is something that only Bill Russell's Celtics however, have ever done. You are someone who's experienced this. You yeah. know what it's like. What, what are sort of the, is it significant to have that streak? I mean, this is unbelievable. And, you know, we, we have put KD in the forefront of this team, but this is really about Steph Curry. It's about the threat and the pressure that he puts on your defense night in and night out. At no time in history have we seen a player be able to extend a team defense like this guy. I mean, a guy that's 6'4". The pressure that he put on a team defense night in and night out, and it's unbelievable that they're going back to the finals again. I mean, there's there's no one standing in their way, as far as I can see, that that's going to knock them off. I uh, mean, they did. This is now their fifth finals in a row. You guys did it six times in eight years, and I remember by the end that '98 finals. You were dealing with injury problems, yeah. right? I mean, it's hard to do over and over again. What do you remember about that? Well, it was very difficult because I, you know, as I look back, even before I got into the game, players, as they go through those long playoff runs, injuries tend to knock you out. It's not the opponent. And that's what I was thinking about going into our final run because I was dealing with a couple herniated discs in game five. And I was thinking we were going to be able to close the Jazz out in Chicago. So I gave my best effort and we ended up losing that game by two points. But it was going back to game six that I was thinking about not playing, taking myself Wait, out so of the Wait, so you weren't going to play that game? No, I was not. I was pretty much done, and I was kind of talked into it through my teammates and the coaching staff. Michael Jordan, very convincing. Yeah, Is that Michael, what you're telling me? Ron, Tony. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty convincing, but it was something that we all wanted. You know, right. that's, that's what you fight for. Oh, of course. You, you, but that's how bad it was that you didn't even think you were going to play? I, I didn't, I didn't want to play. Okay. <laughs> and I, was, I, was, I was hurt. I physically just didn't want to go anymore. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I, I did want the title. Yep. And ultimately, I sucked it up, <laughs> took a few meds, and we were able to win that series. Wow. But it was a it was a pretty tough series for me to get through. I'll never forget you and I've talked about this being in the locker room after the Heat went to their fourth straight title. Shane Battier retired. Ray Allen basically retired. Four straight finals. Yeah. Four straight finals. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. The title. Spurs will, they will wish, argue they with wish. you. <laughs> like that team was so zapped. They which were done. You're talking about after your run being physical. I'm sure you yes. weren't the only one who was hurting. Oh no. Um, and here they are, five years in a row. And with, with, with not without adversity. It's not like this has been a, a merry-go-round, especially this season. Yeah, absolutely. Very impressive, no matter what happens from here. But boy, that doesn't mean we're not going to watch what happens from here. Because in the East, there is going to be a strong team waiting for them.